to the graphic nature of this program, listener discretion is advised. He is a comic book nerd. In brightest day and darkest night, we can learn a lot from comics. She is a reality TV junkie. No idea. Snooki had her baby. A dollar makes me holla. Chris likes sci-fi. They keep your, they do a brain transplant into this whole new body, but it's you. Kristen likes celebrity gossip. Breaking what do you news. Think? Oh, more breaking news. Official. Uh-huh. Official. Or was just a rumor. Hey, Stu, our pets moved back in together. What do they have in common? Nothing. You're listening to Two Strangers, One Podcast. Now, here's Chris and Kristen. Well, hello and welcome to Two Strangers, One Podcast. I'm Chris. And I'm Kristen. And today we are here interviewing a gentleman by the name of Devin Lucas, based out of another more West Coast love More for West us. Coast, yes. And basically, uh, Devin helped us out on our Kickstarter, even though that crashed and burned horribly. You don't want to bring it up. You don't <laughs> want to bring that up. <laughs> but uh, we have him on the line right now with this interview. Devin, say hi to the crowd. Hi, crowd. <laughs> hi, crowd, yes. <laughs> and basically, Devin, when you go to like a comedy show or something like that, like you go to an improv show and everybody in the audience is improv so even though we right. had a kickstarter uh <laughs> this gentleman has a kickstarter of his own uh you are doing now this blows my mind because i can't believe this hasn't been done before you are doing a documentary about dr demento it's like the one and only the one and only yep so it's like you work for meep morp studios yes <laughs> Is, is that's that a, a mouthful. Meet more. Meet more. Is that a doctor? Uh huh. But you remember it though. It sticks yeah, out. <laughs> very true. You do remember it. Very true. Smart. Smart advertising. Is that is that a uh, that's is that a documental reference or is that just um, something? You guys no, but it's, it's, it's what it is. It's meet more. But I don't know exactly where it came from. But uh. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> don't that, ask. Is that the Jetsons? Oh no, that's Eep Eep Orp. I don't know. Eep Orp. <laughs> no, that's yeah, it was the Jetsons was a Eep Orp Orc Ah Ah. That means I love you. You remember that? No. Oh yes, absolutely. Oh, I see he remembers it. It was it was an episode where um, Elroy really? was writing. <laughs> Elroy was making him and his friend were writing to uh, making up a secret language to each other. And then Judy Jetson, uh, she had um, Jet Screamer, who was like this teeny bopper uh, heart throb actor, actually found Elroy's lyrics because she wrote a song for him. Then he found Elroy's this beautiful secret language. <laughs> And he thought that was the letter from Judy Jetson, and he wrote a song called Eep Op Work Ah Ah, oh, okay. which means I love you. Oh, that's You just can't match writing like that. I know, I know. It's genius. <laughs> so why a documentary on Dr. Tomento? Uh, because uh, it hasn't been done yet. It, okay. it just kind of seems to blow everybody's mind that nobody's done something like this yet, and I'm just uh, lucky enough to have been chosen to do it. He has an incredible story, so. Yeah. H- have you thought of the idea of dementory? <laughs> yeah. Yes. You're doing We've a dementory. We've gone through Dr. Dementory and, uh. <laughs> now, Meep Morp originally is an animation studio, correct? Animation, graphic design, yeah. Now, where can, can people find your work online? I mean, that's pretty, you know, since we're podcasting, they're right in front of their computer. Uh, yeah, uh, meepmorp.com is where you can find all of the uh, previous work. It's, uh, done a lot of, uh, Music videos, uh, documentary animation, uh, commercials, business oh. presentations, things like that. Okay. So, like, when someone needs, like, a little animation in the middle of, like, their documentary, like, when they're telling a story, you guys do stuff like that? Yes. Oh, okay, cool. And Dr. Demento, he's known for hosting the radio show for people who don't know, who should know. I would uh, hope that anyone listening to oh. the show. <laughs> now, the, now the, the gist of the show is that I'm the nerd and Kristen isn't. Surprisingly enough, she had no idea who Dr. Demena was. Plus, there's a, there's a 10-year difference because... Yeah. So he gave me a nice rundown. So he used to host the radio show, and it would be all the spoof songs. Sort of like, you know, Weird Al Yankovic is like the well-known... That's like, yeah, that's like his... The big key. the big guy. That's his every. That was his protege. Yeah, his protege. Is there... Do you still listen to sort of spoof songs? Like, is there somebody else that may be your favorite, quote-unquote, spoofer besides Weird Al? Uh, people currently working? Yeah. Uh, well, there's uh, there's a whole bunch of them. You know, Dr. Demento still uh, still plays, and mm-hmm. uh, there's a whole... There's a website called The Thump, actually, thethump.com, and you're going to find a lot of great... Uh, Curtius and uh, a lot of originals too, like uh, the great Luke Ski, Insane Ian, uh, Devo Spice, MC Lars. So There's still some some really great talent out there. Aside from Weird Al, who of and course you, is still out there. 
It was right. thump.com, T-H-U-M-P? F-U-M-P. I think it's thefump.com. Oh, the thump. Yes. It's, uh, it stands for the Funny names. Music Project. Deep Morp and the Fump. Deep Morp, Fump, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Because I, I, you know, you sent us the electric press kit. Who else is in your in the studio? Because you guys had some other projects, or or, or the guys you have that work in the studio with you. Uh, other projects, like what well, do you mean exactly? He, um, didn't a guy you work with? Because I was doing, I did a little uh, searching around. He did a movie called Holy Rollers with the kid. Oh from, yeah, um, Holy Rollers. The kid from uh, yeah, uh, that was Social Network. <laughs> yeah, that was actually Connell Creations who did Holy Rollers, and uh, we did the animation in Holy Rollers. Oh, okay. oh that's awesome. Because okay, let me see if I understand this clearly. It's about like Orthodox Hasidic Jewish kids that are coward card counters. Yeah, it's it's uh, yeah, it's, it's card counting. Uh, yeah, it's cr- uh, Christian card counting. I think. Oh, Chris. Oh, okay, okay. I thought it was. I'm sorry. I thought it was uh, Orthodox. <laughs> for some reason, I thought it was Hasidim. I thought for some reason. Christian um, card counting. Okay. But they're okay. <laughs> this is it sounds yeah. good. I have to see this movie now. <laughs> um Yeah, I think it's on Netflix now. Oh, oh okay. Right. Damn, I gotta get I'll my to Netflix. check that out, yeah. Because now they have all the Cartoon Network cartoons and I've been <laughs> I miss my Johnny <laughs> Bravo and there's Laboratory and Cow and Chicken. Uh <laughs> now I'm assuming are you a big music fan since you're doing you're on since board Dr. with Demento, Dr. kind Demento. of a music guy? Oh uh, yeah, I'm I'm definitely a big music fan. I'm I'm more of a movie geek, I have to say. Oh, okay. Uh but I, I grew up with Doctor Demento. And, and he really helped kind of shape my my taste and sensibilities in, in music. <laughs> what um, band or group would you say most influenced your life? Oh, goodness gracious. Uh, just too many, uh, too many bands to list off for that. You can name more uh, than one. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> Top five. Talking Heads is probably my favorite band that's not okay. Demented. Uh, I, I really love anything by Tom Waits, and Tom Waits has been on the Dr. Demento show. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there, you know, I, I've, I've always been influenced by uh, Weird Al, too. I've, I'm a child of the 80s. So. Right, right. So uh, now, growing up, now, we, we were talking right before the show. You you lived in New York also. Um, where was your like first recollection of the Doctor? Because like, where did you first hear him? Uh, well, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm originally from California. I was only in New York for a brief time. Oh, okay. uh, where I first heard Dr. Mento, I, I was about 11 or 12 years old, and I heard him on KLSX 97.1 Los Angeles, which is no longer here. Uh, and uh, it just went nuts. <laughs> it was <laughs> completely different from anything else that was being played on the radio. And uh, I became an instant fan, and I, I actually it was that was his live show. He had a syndicated show that went around to the rest of the country, but in L.A. he had a live show. Mm-hmm. And uh, about that age, about eleven, twelve, I started calling into the show, and and I actually interviewed Doctor Demento when I was eleven years old uh, for a school project. Oh, <laughs> so, how cool! So he was like and, your first And then interview. I never I never met him face to face until I was uh, working on this film. But uh, I told him I'm going to continue that interview I started uh, over over twenty years ago. How awesome! <laughs> By any chance, does he remember you? Your interview at when you were eleven? Uh, if he did, he didn't let on. I, I have a feeling <laughs> there were there were lots of other eleven year olds trying to get through to him at that time. <laughs> So when you interviewed him at eleven, was that over the phone, or did you? How did you interview yeah. him in the past? Over oh, the phone. I I called. Yeah, I called into the station as soon as the show was over because I knew he wasn't busy. And you know, being eleven, I thought I'd be slick and and ask for Barry Hansen instead of Doctor Demento because <laughs> I'm asking right. for Barry Hansen, then I must know him personally. Yeah. And uh, it either worked or they didn't care. Yeah. And I got in. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Demento picked up the phone and talked to me for about 15 minutes. That was my first celebrity encounter in my life. That's so cool at 11. How awesome. Because <laughs> no, no, I remember it very, I wish I could remember what the project I was doing was actually about. I, the whole thing's kind of a blur to me from you know, just being so uh, starstruck on the phone. <laughs> It's funny. Now, um, so have since then you've met the doctor in person? Uh, yes, uh, through this project, we've, we've gotten to work uh, pretty closely with Doctor Demento, and it's it's been incredible. He's a great guy. So, do you like you sneak up? Like, did you come on? Let's be real. For, be real for a second. Did you start this documentary just so you could sit? You could just sit there and watch him work. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's a part of it. Yeah, I, I I've always loved him, so uh, you know this, this got me up close and personal. But uh, the, the main the main reason behind it though was legitimately uh, you know we were just shocked nobody's done this yet and it's something that we we knew that we could do well and we were, we were tapped into that audience and 
there's a lot of reasons behind picking this one. Mm. But certainly getting to meet Dr. Demento was one of them. Right, of course. Because <laughs> I remember growing up, I mean, obviously kind of doing like a podcast and stuff like that. When I was a kid in New York City, there was a show called Small Things Considered. And it was a, uh, it was a, it was on a public, public radio station. And they played Dr. Dr. Demento. Like it was kind of, even though the show itself was called Small Things Considered and they had kids that can call in. And it was, I mean, it, it got serious at times. They tried to keep it light. They had all the funny songs, but they played Dr. Demento. That was my that what that's what kind of pushed got me into that world of, of Dr. Demento because I mean come on I mean fish heads and and dead puppies and you know because I was I was singing these songs for Kristen and she's giving me like the, the oddest <laughs> eye I'm like I'm sorry <laughs> like you never heard of those, fish, those, those, uh, those two songs in particular it's the number one and number two most requested song in uh, Dr. Demento history to this day. <laughs> Yeah, dead mean, puppies uh, and fish heads. The fish heads the number one. <laughs> Sounds like nice songs. Yeah, because dead, dead puppies. Dead puppies. Right. And, dead and puppies. the people that uh, that made them are, are attached to our movie because we were excited about having them as well. Oh, yeah, how cool! Well, because I mean, especially fish heads was kind of like that '80s new wave. Like someone got their hands on a synthesizer and, and, and you know, <laughs> oh, yeah. their voice. No, it, it predates it predates that a little bit. I think it was a little ahead of the curve. That, that, that song was actually, I think, '78. And oh, okay. uh, those guys, I, I know those guys were hanging out with Devo at the time, and uh, the whole new so, you know, they, they were all kind of part of the same demented crew. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what are your what what have, come, tell us some give us some dirt on the doctor, or tell us like how it is to to hang out with him or to go on to the show. Uh, there, there is no dirt on that guy. I've searched okay. everywhere. There's, <laughs> search. there's no dirt on Doctor Demento. He's just he's he's legitimately one of the coolest people on the face of the planet. Oh, it's not like the uh, the, 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 the microphone goes off and he's chugging a jack a bottle of Jack Daniels and <laughs> throwing no. records across the room at interns and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, he's, he's nothing like that. He he actually puts you at ease right away you, you forget that you're in the room with greatness uh just in terms of of any kind of nervousness disappears he puts you he makes you feel at home did you just reach yeah. out to him like did was it an email a tweet did you call the studio again or oh, what happened it, it was actually kind of uh surprising even to me uh, you know, when I used to call in when I was a kid I used to talk to whimsical will a lot I don't know if uh, you know who whimsical will is uh, he does the Demented Sounds News every week on the Dr. Demento show. Mm -hmm. And he was live in the studio as well, and I'd call him all the time and, and uh, bug him during the show. And he was always really cool with me. And about a year ago, when we first started really seriously thinking about this being a real movie, uh, I found Whimsical Will's email address, and I hadn't talked to him in years, and I, I sent him an email saying, hey, what do you think? Do you think this is something that could be possible? And I thought he was going to shoot back an email saying, you know, oh, not our thing, you know, thank you, nice to hear from you, whatever. <laughs> Instead, he forwarded my messages, uh, message on the Dr. Demento, and within 12 hours, I had a message in my inbox from Dr. Demento himself. How <laughs> oh, cool. So, yeah, nice to know it was a long way. Yeah, it's got to be like, ah! Yes. You know, well, it, it helped that I, I, I had basically written a love letter to Dr. Demento <laughs> and sent it to Whimsical Will. So everything came off as genuine. I wasn't kissing his uh, kissing his butt in front of him. Especially uh, all the phone calls you made at a young age. They probably were like, "Oh, this kid again." <laughs> well, I didn't know if that was going to happen either. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, Doctor Demento got back to us with uh, his manager's info, and we got into with him. And the, his whole operation is just really great. They're more like a family. Awesome. Now he's not wearing everything like the, from there. He, wearing the suit and he wears the like a top tuxedo hat. and a top hat. Was and... he wearing that throughout this documentary? Does he, he, wear, it when, have, does right? he wear it when he records, or is that just uh, a radio? You know, we, we when we uh, when we shot the video for the Kickstarter, we we had him in uh, in both kinds of dress. We have him playing Doctor Demento with the full top hat and tails, and then we also have him playing Barry Hansen in just you know his normal street clothes. So it was kind of interesting being able to direct both of them, so to speak. Oh, cool! It's like, Clark it's like two Kent, different characters. Clark Kent, Superman. Yeah. yeah, it's like it's so weird. Like yeah. I, don't, I don't, I've never seen him out of the hat and tails. So it would, just, like I said, yeah, it'd be like weird. It's like seeing your teacher outside take, school, yeah. or, or yeah, it is kind of like that. Yeah. <laughs> It's like you're supposed to be wearing like in my mind he's he's pushing the shopping cart through the supermarket with the right, hat and exactly. tails. <laughs> you know, but he's very at home in the top hat and tails too. He was just as comfortable and relaxed uh, dressed up. <laughs> so I, I I don't know. I haven't seen him record an actual episode yet. I don't know if he wears the hat in the studio or not, but 
<laughs> did you get to spend any personal time with him? Like go out to the bar and maybe find out what his favorite drink is? Anything like that? Uh, no, no, nothing specifically like that. He does like beer. Okay. Uh, he's apparently is a connoisseur. He can, he can uh, taste it and tell you who made it. Oh, he's one of those. Uh, but I, I have yet to have a beer with him. So hopefully when we have something to celebrate. Yes, of course. <laughs> Do you have any other projects in the works or ideas that you want to toss out there? Oh, I always have a million ideas, but right now this one's really taking all of my focus. Gotcha. Very cool. Our archival footage, because obviously if you're going to go back, are you getting it all from the doctor? Are you collecting it from fans? Are you just going on YouTube? Most of it's being collected from fans. We've got a few off of YouTube. Uh, Dr. Demento uh, has, uh, actually has very little of that stuff himself. Uh, oh, wow. So the you know the fans have kind of documented a lot of it. Oh, well, it's kind of humbling of him. Yeah, and, you know <laughs> he's a very like, humble like, person. There's yeah. no pretense whatsoever. Yeah, and and just uh, to let Kristen know and our, our audience, like you know, doing a little research for this interview, I kind of I was listening to some interviews with Doctor Demeno, and he has he stopped counting his record collection when he hit <laughs> two hundred and fifty thousand. Wow. Yeah. So he has, and I think he hit that number about thirty years ago. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows what it is? Like he stopped. You know, you know that's got to be a person who's into music. I would stop after like a hundred. Be like, I can't go any higher. <laughs> he it's, went up that yeah. high. I wow. mean, it's a dream and a nightmare at the same time. Yeah. Like just to go in there and like to, you know just because I mean someone has to archive it. Somebody has to be there with a right. a notebook or something. Or <laughs> well, I guess yeah, nowadays he, he it does it all himself. The I, I know he he keeps him in a couple different locations now. Mm-hmm. I think he already busted the floor of one of the houses he lived in from the weight of the uh, all the records. <laughs> now I, uh, I got to see the actual record archives when we went to shoot the Kickstarter video, and it, it's amazing just to see all these shelves of great music. Uh, that's like that's a, that's like a, a very cool a place to shoot, like, yeah. like a music lover's dream, like you know, just Smithsonian <laughs> style, you know, that kind of archive. yeah, it, 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 it's it's Smithsonian quality. I mean, everything's in there. <laughs> And on my now you with technology, all of that could fit in your pocket right now on an iPod. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Here we have a warehouse full of seat of, of albums, you know. Oh yeah, I got that yeah. on my 160 gig. I got that in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to hear? Just shuffle. <laughs> no. Um, in New York City, there you um, you mentioned to us earlier that you worked at the Film Forum. Yes, right? I used to work at the Film Forum once upon a time. Oh, right. what'd you do there? I was an usher. Yeah. Start from it, was, the bottom, it was huh? it was the coolest job. I hardly got paid anything, but you know, considering the amount of work I was required to do, I got paid just about right. I <laughs> uh, everyone that worked there was was some sort of an artist, and that was what what was really great about it. You know, uh, some of us were filmmakers. We had a dancer, a painter. Uh, yeah. Just kind of on down the line, and it was uh, it was a great place to go and hang out, even on your day off. Mm-hmm. So, not to mention, you get a free film education because you get in free to all these you know great classic movies and new foreign films and indie films and documentaries. Yeah, I'm sure. And around what what so was was that? I'm just curious. Oh God, I think 2003 to 2005, somewhere in there, maybe 2002. Oh, okay, all right. So I was like, I was kind of like you know we were like we were talking before the show. Like I was kind of like a I was living in New York. I was a, a village kid, you know, you'd go hanging out St. Mark's Place, St. Mark's Comics, Washington Square Park. That whole uh, you know I was there more of the late '90s, and I'm 36. I'm about to be 36, so I'm, I'm a little old. <laughs> I'm an old man. I'm an old man considered yeah. you know, com- compared to like a lot of I don't know, for some reason I hang out around a bunch of kids or something. I don't know. Keeps you young. Do you have a favorite documentary? A favorite documentary. Uh, oh, there's so again, there's just so many good ones. Uh, uh, one that I'm always putting on over and over again for whatever reason is uh, the kid stays in the picture, which is the documentary about Robert Evans, the Paramount producer. That one's done in just such a an entertaining. It, it just flows well. Uh, yeah. a great visual documentary, and, and I've heard that they actually used his uh, Robert Evans book on tape for his autobiography was used as the narration for the film and it's it's worth the price of admission alone just to hear Robert Evans put put things in his own words <laughs> from the from the source and now being a film uh unfortunately you know being a film geek now we this episode is coming out on Thursday but we just recorded an episode that's going to come out on Tuesday uh the passing of Roger Ebert oh yeah it's very sad about that yeah it's like i mean <laughs> i'm going to you know i'm going to get a little controversial here like i said in the last episode you know the guy wasn't the nicest person you know all of a sudden he passes away and he 
he's a saint. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but that's just my opinion, not yours. I just, just for, for every, you know, it's, you know, I, I just love when someone passes and it's not to, I'm not speaking ill. I'm not trying to speak ill of the dead, but he's, you know, he was known for, for bashing people, you know, <laughs> and all of a sudden he's yeah. gone and he's, oh, he was such a great guy. <laughs> Well, you know, he, he had a sharp tongue, that's for sure. Yeah. Uh, I mean, a couple of the books he published were nothing but his bad reviews. He, he started to get more popular for his bad reviews. Uh, but he, he was a, a genius, I think. He's one of the last of the, the real critics, the ones who actually review the art of the film rather than just try to come up with the uh, the punny catch line that'll go on the trailer or the poster. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what's that guy's name uh, from Rolling Stone? <laughs> oh, damn. Yeah, you, you know what I mean. These yeah. are the people that call Volcano a hell lava ride. <laughs> you don't like that? <laughs> <laughs> My favorite review of all time, though, was actually uh, for Robin Williams' Bicentennial Man. Oh, God. And uh, oh, a reviewer in one of my local papers here called, said it was like drowning in honey. <laughs> might be the perfect description for that movie. It is, yeah. Bison's a very well. I mean, for some reason, of course, both those, both uh, Bicentennial Man and AI. Yeah. So for some reason, they we're they're like kind of hours they're, long. they're like paired in my mind. And it was they're both right. those movies are like you think it's the end and it's not. Some more. Right. So many yeah. false endings. Yeah. We could have ended it an hour ago, but we're still going. Exactly. Robots. Robots have. Complicated lives. Yeah, it's tough, tough world out there. <laughs> so you're in, you're in. Well, you're you're outside of Los Angeles right now, but you're. That's is that was that your dream always to be like a documentary or to be a filmmaker or was that uh, to be to be a filmmaker? Yeah, I I have to admit this is the first uh, documentary I've ever tried to tackle. But uh, usually the the scripts that I write are are narrative and and you know different genres, and this is the first thing that I've approached that's uh, straight ahead real life stuff. Uh, but it's been really exciting. It's it's been creatively challenging, which I like. Yeah. Do you edit also, or are you just because you know sometimes I've uh, heard you can we, find we, a story in editing. You know. Well, we're we're a, we're a three person uh, crew here. Uh, uh -huh. Myself, Scott McKenzie, and Christy McDonald. We we each kind of have our our things that we specialize in. We're uh, so I'm not the editor, but uh, I'm sure I'll be learning quickly how to do some of it uh, <laughs> when we when we have hours of footage to put together. Gotcha. Is it but, gonna uh, be, Scott's our editor right now. Is it Avid, Final Cut Pro? I'm sorry, I'm, Premiere. Sure. I'm, 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 I'm geeking out here for a second. You know, do you know what the what programming? I'm just curious, just because. Oh, know. let me. I'm trying to remember what it is. What What does Scott use on that? <laughs> to edit on After Effects. After, After Effects to edit so far. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Who's your favorite director? Like, who do you look up to? Uh, you know, it sounds like such a first year of film school answer, but I have to say Martin Scorsese. <laughs> Uh, okay. uh, I also really love the Cohen brothers and P.T. Anderson as far as people that are uh, that are actively working. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was uh, well, actually, I'll be honest with you. I don't who's you said P.T. Anderson. I don't know if I P.T. Anderson, Paul Thomas Anderson. Yeah, uh, oh, he did. Uh, he did uh, the master recently. My favorite is, is Boogie Nights. Though Boogie Nights is oh, is uh, in my top great. ten. Oh, okay, it's, uh, I guess because <laughs> I always get because I'm Thomas. thinking I'm thinking of um, I'm thinking of two different people. The whoever did the um, oh my god, why is my brain not working? Well, there's the other guy. I think he did Event Horizon or something like that. There's a bit. There's three Andersons, and there's Wes Anderson. Who's yeah, also West, that's what it was. I was thinking of Wes Anderson, which was, uh, what's that movie with the, uh, oh, jeez. I, I can't believe my brain is totally frozen right now. About the family with, uh... Royal Tenenbaums. Royal Tenenbaums. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. Wes Anderson. And, <laughs> yes. and you Gene know, Hackman Django Express. And, Gene Hackman's and, and, great. Uh, <laughs> that's right. And then there's Paul W.S. Anderson, who did, like, Event Horizon, the Mortal Kombat yeah. movies. <laughs> uh, like, I think, ex all except one, like, all the Resident Evil movies. And I have to be honest with you, I'm a fan. <laughs> Of those movies, as crazy now, he's a um, he's a big uh, the guy who did it and and Assault on Precinct Thirteen and and Escape from New York. John Carpenter. John Car. He the Paul uh, W S Anderson is a big John Carpenter fan and doesn't hide it. And you know and you know and and, and I like it. I like you know Escape from New York and and stuff like that. So I don't That's know. Not who he likes. Yeah, well, just so <laughs> it's a discussion. I can talk about who I like. No, I love. Nice. I'm a huge John Carpenter fan. <laughs> 
you know, yeah. Alfred Hitchcock loved Halloween. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I, I remember hearing that. Hey, you know, it's and and honestly, like me, I'm a David Fincher fanboy. I, you know, just Fight oh, yeah. Club Fincher's Seven, great. The Game, those three. I movies. think The Game yeah. is, is unjustifiably underrated. Yeah. I think The Game was great. Yeah, it is Michael Douglas. That's all you got to say. Michael Douglas. That's this is a, you know, so, <laughs> Michael Douglas, David Fincher. Why don't these guys work again? But you know, so recently, well, I don't know recently, but you said you saw The Master recently. I did see The Master recently. Yes. How, how was I've heard Joaquin Phoenix is excellent in it. He's he's outstanding. Uh, I I'm, I'm really going to have to see it a second time in order to be able to <laughs> describe it at all. It's it's a very uh, it's a it's not hard to follow. It's just it's intentionally ambiguous about a lot of things. And uh, it's, I thought it was very well done. Joaquin being but, uh, Joaquin, it was his best performance, and he's he's looking more like Johnny Cash now than he was when he was playing uh, playing Walk the Line. What a thought! Because is that, if I understand it correctly, because that's that's kind of like it's basically about Scientology and 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 L. Ron Hubbard, or I don't know, I, yeah, I don't know what the part of are in Hollywood if you want to get into that. That's, that's that's part of the ambiguity of the film is you know that's that's the implication is that this guy's L. Ron Hubbard. He has a completely different character name and. Uh, the, the film doesn't ever directly name Scientology or anything like that. It was it was kind of intentionally left open to a bad interpretation. Gotcha. Oh, well, I'm, I'm just no. I mean, growing up, I mean, my dad had a copy of Dianetics on his, and my father was an avid reader. But I think my father just read it just because he just liked reading. But I do like when I was, you know, I guess you and I are kind of a closer in age. You know, being a child of the '80s, I do remember those Dianetics commercials where it's like, you know, oh. a volcano coming out of the ground and all these. It like, looked like the most exciting book ever. <laughs> You know, like unleashing your power. I'm sold. Lava yeah. shooting out, and oh yeah, I yeah. wanted to read Dianetic. It looked like a, yeah, it looked like a trailer <laughs> for an action movie. And you know, it's like, really oh, this book, I gotta go. And actually, I mean, I try to plod through um, a Battleship Earth or Battle Battlefield Earth or whatever. Yeah. Oh, Battlefield Earth. Uh, but I'll, I'll uh, maybe once again let's leave that alone. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't want to rub John Travolta the wrong way, but uh, That's right. you know, but he did make Battlefield Earth. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and artistically, I can say something about that. <laughs> but uh, it's, it's the only movie uh, I went and saw it at the drive-in with uh, my girlfriend at the time, and she made us leave. I was really enjoying how bad it was personally. <laughs> uh, she made us leave. <laughs> so Are I've the- only seen half of Battlefield Earth. I like to think I saw the good half. Yeah, there you go. Well, the the book, I mean, from reading the book, the movie actually ended on the halfway point. There was supposed to be a part two, but I guess it just... They had high ambitions for that one. (laughs) Now, um, are there still drive-ins around you? Because there are, they're like... There's some around us. There's one from, if I understand correctly, up here in upstate New York, there's like one like an hour away from us in Avalon. Is that the Hyde Park one? Well, this is, I mean, upstate New York. I mean, there was one um, in, uh, right by the, um, oh... It was in Long Island, uh, right where the uh, the music fair used to be. Oh, jeez, I forgot the name of the place. Oh, no, I don't know about that one. I remember I, I took a couple of road trips up to the one in Hyde Park. I don't know if it's still standing or but it was beautiful. The screen was set up uh, amongst the uh, trees, and you could see fireflies that uh, would pop up behind the screen as you were watching That's the movie. Cool. <laughs> yeah, we've, we've lost the drive-ins as a, a cultural thing, yeah. and uh, it's kind of a shame. We've, we've still got a few down here in Southern California, too. I try to make it out as often as possible. Uh, guys, seven well, bucks for a double different. feature is not bad. Oh wow! I mean, to show you the era of the last time I went to go to the to the drive-in, because like I said, it was close. Um, I mean, it was like the remake of Godzilla. You know, basketball. <laughs> basketball. Um, there's a class. <laughs> yeah. Hey, if you're gonna see the remake of Godzilla anywhere, it should be in a drive-in. Right. Yeah. It Get was that real cinema experience. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you know, and like I remember the first time I was a rookie, and my foot, for whatever reason, just being, you know, in the car, I kept hitting my brake, and and <laughs> the people behind me actually came up and knocked on the windows, like, could you stop hitting your brake? And it's like, <laughs> it's I don't know, it was just something. It was just something. On your life. Yeah, I was, I was flashing my lights in their face, and I, I it didn't click in my head you're that even, leg, like, you know, that I'm, I don't know, I just, you're, you know, were breaking drive-in etiquette. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I uh, defied the etiquette or whatever, but it was, yeah, that to show you. And it's a shame, you know. I guess nowadays, you know, because they're only open during the warm months. You right, know, you yeah. only open at night. I mean, I don't know. I've never been to a drive through during the day. <laughs> I think it's 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 not. There's no profit on just the summer months at night. You know, that's it's a yeah, shame. Not though. to mention, it's getting harder and harder to find a quiet spot to put one. Uh, one of the ones that's uh, right near me. There's a railroad track that runs right behind it. 
<laughs> in the middle of your movie, you got a train going by. <laughs> That's awful. So well, we're running, out of, train we're running out of open spaces. <laughs> What's that one with Denzel Washington that came out a couple months ago? Oh, my God. <laughs> See, now that would be perfect. Yeah, what was that one? They're only really going to play that one. Oh, they also, that's, yeah. And they also well, had, um, well, no, no, not so. Wasn't there, there was Pelham one where, one, two, Pelham 1, 2, 3. <laughs> But wasn't there another it was, one? It yeah, was a like it was a runaway tra- derailment. Not derailment. It sounds like that. <laughs> that sounds that's a great name for a movie. Derailment. Uh, <laughs> yeah, if there yeah, isn't one, we have to make a movie called yeah. Derailment. Uh, <laughs> That'd be the only. I think there reason. is. <laughs> there's there's one called Derailroaded, and Doctor Demento is actually in it. Perfect. Oh, <laughs> full circle. That's good. Let's see that. I love it. I love it. Um, <laughs> so okay, now we kind of went off to a little bit of on a, on a Hollywood stretch. Let's go back to the Kickstarter. Um, let the audience know about like their rewards because i know you you had put that there in the future uh part of the rewards are tickets for events uh, has yes. that been has, has that been arranged yet or can you talk about it i'm just i'm curious that- we're still working on it we've got a couple of ideas for what we'd like to do uh the the, t- the tickets uh, we do have event tickets on there now but they're part of bigger packages okay uh yeah so let the so audience know like that, can- the levels and and what they get for for donating oh we're, we're trying to hit every level we've got more things that we're going to be bringing out as as the uh campaign continues uh right now we've got a lot of things at a lower end level that are uh you know, like a kazoo and uh stickers and just kind of fun stuff for the kiddies and uh, kind of the mid-range where we've got your DVDs and your posters, and uh, we've got a really cool, for 50 bucks, we've got a really cool fan club package, which is a recreation of Dr. Demento's 1975 fan club package, where you get an, an autographed picture, a certificate of dementia, and uh, <laughs> and, a t- and an old T-shirt. We have the uh, the old uh, the old design T-shirt. Oh, that's fun. Now, one thing I mean you didn't mention and, and that I thought was I mean I'll be honest with you we stole the idea um, was the USBs or, or yeah, has, the, has that been confirmed because it's it's a USB with the top hat on it. Yes, the USB is one of our more popular items right now. Uh, we have two of them. We have one that has just the movie at a lower price, and then we have another one that's going to have the movie and a bunch of you know kind of bonus stuff. And we're not really saying what the bonus stuff is going to be yet we have some stuff already but a lot of it's going to come from you know extra footage during the actual production and certain little uh secret things that no one else might be getting yeah just tease it yeah it's it's, it's okay to tease you know <laughs> you know get them all you know get them excited what could be on there is that because i i don't have the pdf in front of me but that's is that the whole or because isn't there like tickets to the premiere and stuff like that or the, uh for right now the tickets to the premiere are tied into two other rewards the the two highest tier rewards there's uh dinner with the doc which we've already sold one of you actually get to go and have dinner with dr demento Oh. And you get two tickets to the premiere, and uh, then the uh, the highest tier for ten grand, you get uh, all the all the swag, and uh, you get an associate producer credit on the film and on our IMDb page, and you get four tickets to the premiere. Oh, that awesome. is sweet. Damn, I gotta get my tickets. Yeah, we have big plans for the premiere. <laughs> Nothing solidified yet, so I don't want to go too far yeah. into it. But the the well, premiere is going to be really cool. People are going to want to go. That's cool. Oh. Um, now this is a Kickstarter. What is what would they look for to um donate to Find the page. You. Like, oh no, I'm sorry. Or don't, I'm sorry. Well, I was going to say like how how can let's go over just to remind the audience on how how they can find you. Uh well, you can uh, go to the Kickstarter main page and search under the smogberry trees or search Dr. Demento. Either one will pop our project up. Okay. Under the smogberry trees. Just, mm-hmm. you know, just uh, it's solidify that. And Dr. Yeah, just, Demento, you know. Dr. Demento. And that's Dr. Demento will find it. You can also go to smogberrytrees.com and link to <laughs> our face or to our Kickstarter from there and to our Facebook and Twitter. Okay. Yeah, let that be. Spread the word, like the page, tell your friends like the page. Donate. <laughs> yeah, get Donate. all your demented buddies in on it. All right. You heard it. You heard it here, people. Um let's uh, let's I mean let's have a little more fun. Um just <laughs> sounds weird. Let's have a little I was more hoping fun. we could, yeah. Yeah. Well the, one thing when is this going to get more fun? <laughs> <laughs> well, because right now people can still because um, the doctor is still active. He's he's on he's active, but he's online. He's online. He's he's no longer on terrestrial radio, but he didn't skip a beat. Uh, he he didn't miss a single week when he switched from terrestrial to uh, drdemento.com. 
and he still does a weekly episode. It goes up uh, every Saturday. Mm-hmm. So we actually stay up until midnight on Friday to hear it and so that we can kind of <laughs> recreate that live feeling. Like, we, you know, in L.A., we were unique being able to hear it live. Yeah. But he's still up and running the shows better than ever, really. He's, he, now that he's online, he's free of the FCC. He can, uh, he can finally play Titties and Beer. There we go. Uh, <laughs> it was one, one of his uh, first number one hits back in the 70s when he had to call it Beepies and Beer. <laughs> so he can he can finally play uh, Frank Zappa without editing him after all these decades. <laughs> yeah, because Frank has been on the show a whole bunch of times, if I'm not mistaken. Doctor Demento, uh, actually, I think he knew Frank Zappa before he even became Doctor Demento. I think he'd met him a couple of times, and uh, he he really loved him. When when Zappa passed away in the early '90s, uh, Doctor Demento dedicated his full two hour show to Frank Zappa, and he's never done that before or since. Uh, not an entire show. Yeah, and so that I, Frank Zappa is pretty revolutionary, pretty influential. And um, one, part of the another interview that I was listening to uh, about Doctor Demento was because at the time of nine eleven, you know, he was he was pre recording these shows two or three weeks in advance. And yes. So the episode that came out like right after nine eleven, you know, obviously he wasn't wasn't planned for it or anything like that. But you know, a lot of people like you know were sending him thanks, like you know, thank you for keeping, keeping that it, normalcy. Yeah, kind of so like giving yeah. us you know giving us back something to laugh at. You right. know, after yeah, all people this needed incredible it. tragedy. Yeah, after all that, people really needed it. You know, he's an icon. He's, you know, you, you kind of, it's kind of like, you know, I guess like Walter Cronkite was with the news and stuff like that, or, you know, saying like you need that kind of like stability where like you can go and go, okay, it's everything's okay. all right. You know what I'm saying? Well, Do- after Dr. 43 okay. years, he's, he's a touchstone. He's a cultural touchstone. Yeah, I think, you know, you know, and nowadays, like, since everything is saved online, like, there's going to be some 11 year old kid in the year 2200, some, some kid's going to be listening to fish heads. And dead puppies. Oh yeah, and cracking up and getting it, and under, you know, like you know, like his other friends may like call. Oh, you're so like it's so retro and old school, and and <laughs> you know, it's gonna be weird that now that everything's saved online, like a, a snapshot of culture is gonna be saved in the future. And I think yes. it's gonna be so weird when there's gonna be kids that are like into the '90s or into the '80s in the year 2200. <laughs> you know, to, you right? Know, like uh, really into the 80s. Yeah, there's gonna be you know, there's gonna be kids into like new wave that really do have like. The Jordy LaForge, you know, I band, you know, thing around their eyes that, you know, like that. Remember, like the '80s, like, long thin, you know, a kid really wearing it, not ironically, you know, listen, you know, <laughs> listening to Devo and listening to, you know, uh, you got a different perspective on the future. Yeah, I think it's gonna be, you know, because you know things go in cycles. That you know, when when I was growing, you know, like I okay, I was in the '80s and there's the early '90s where like um the Wonder Years was kind of big. So kind of like the '60s and the '70s kind of did a resurgence, and kids were wearing bell bottoms jeans you know but yeah Jimenez, no, you know, every every generation really kind of has its its sitcom marker you know from happy days uh, up <laughs> yeah, happy days and 10 years later you got wonder years then he had that 70s show so we'll see what happens next yeah, so I mean, so I think Doctor Demento, you know, being online, there's going to be a kid it's in the year 2200 <laughs> listening to it's, Dead. It's all and... preserved for him. It's all going to be there. Yeah, digitally preserved. So he's, he's got episodes on uh, doctordemento.com that actually date back to 1970. Wow. So, so we you know, can go back. A, can go a back lot back. of his back catalog is going to be available. Like, do you do you download all the old stuff? Like, do you just do you like just oh. absorb it all, or or? <laughs> well, it, it streams it, uh, online, um, so you can't. It's it's a uh, tricky to to download anything. Oh, okay. uh, but we but we are lucky enough to have access that <laughs> most people have not been given access uh, to the episodes the way we have mm-hmm. and actually, so yeah I mean, i've been catching up on a lot of dr demento is that how you mostly did all your research for this documentary through this uh, it's you know it, it's a part of the research but it's also something that's easy to to put on when we're hanging out and talking about other things or if i'm sitting and, and reading a, a, a biography about someone that i hope to interview yeah uh, it's just easy background so uh, you know i mean there's there's uh there's 40 years to catch up on on uh dr demento episodes so i <laughs> <laughs> you just kind of have to take it piece by piece, and we're gonna we're gonna start a we're gonna start a drinking game. Everybody, go back to the beginning of the episode, and every time Kristen mispronounces documentary, take a it? shot. You say documentary. <laughs> <laughs> I say it correct. Right. Take a you, shot. You heard time. you got to drink. Documentary. <laughs> documentary. There, there we go. go. <laughs> Special. <laughs> I mean, and and of course the thing I was I was I don't I don't want to say I want to avoid, but I mean the obvious one, the the big big huge 
influence that was on my life and your life is the Weird Al Yankovic. You know, I mean, who oh, yeah. in the 80s Eat it. did not remember <laughs> yet? Eat it and fat, you know. I'm fat, I'm fat. You know, when I was uh, when I was in first grade, I got in a huge argument with my best friend because he had the audacity to say that Bon Jovi was better than Weird Al Yankovic, and I, I still have not forgiven him. Right. <laughs> you stand your ground. See, now, if you're in yeah. Jersey, then you have to then relax, you know. <laughs> but if you're not in Jersey, then then you can make that argument. Yeah. In Jersey, you may get hurt. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, I mean, I grew up, like, you know, with the N3D album, even worse. Um, what's the other, you know... Uh, I mean, you know, then, I mean, Polka on, Pretty. Yeah, Polka, uh, yeah, Poodle Hat. Uh, I'm trying to remember the other ones. You know, I mean, it's just, you know, Weird Al Yankovic was such a, because I was, you know, another thing of our generation was, you know, being allowed to use the album, the, the record player by yourself oh, without yeah. your parents. And, you know, being, now, of course, I mean, it wasn't, it, it, these weren't albums I purchased. I had to convince my mom to buy them for me. But, you know, I remember being allowed to listen, you know, like finally getting old enough to use the record player. And my albums were, you know, Weird Al Yankovic, uh, you know, Michael Jackson's filler, of course, the Annie soundtrack. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I didn't have Annie. I had the Popeye soundtrack. Though. Wow. Annie's large. Annie's mine. <laughs> music by Harry Nelson. You can't knock Harry Nelson. <laughs> so it's, wow. So it's, it's, you know, there's, there's definitely a cultural thing that our kids will never understand about, you know, the, the, being old enough and responsible enough where your parents will let you use the record player by yourself. And then, you know, being able big to listen deal. To, you know, my mom's not going to sit there and listen to you know i'm fat and stuck you know <laughs> stuck in a closet with vanna white or you know i lost on jeopardy or you know any of those great weird al yankovic classics you know i was not gonna listen to that go ahead use the damn record player leave me alone <laughs> I think my mom had to listen to it. I, I think anybody that was in my house had to listen to it by the volume I was playing in my room. <laughs> right, yeah. but, but I was like, my parents had old Steve Martin records and things like that, too, so I could get away with it. They were Dr. Demento fans before I was. Uh, ah, yeah. so you're second generation. You're like, when my, because I have a two year old daughter, and I would love once or Yankovic if he ever was to play anywhere around here or in New York City. I would bring my daughter in a heartbeat. Have you ever seen him oh, live? Oh, yeah. He, he's, I haven't seen him live. I've, I've seen video of him live, and he does an amazing show. I mean, costume changes. It's it looks like a real yeah. workout. Yeah, but he I gives his all, and there's kids all over that audience, too. He runs a, a good, clean family show, and it, it's all the more impressive for it in a lot of ways. Yeah, he earns every penny when he does those shows because I, I never, unfortunately, I've never seen him live, but once again, I did, I, I have seen his, uh, I believe it was a DVD, you know, of his of live show. show. And, you know, this, you know, literally changing outfits for every song because, you know, he's dressed up he's like, like Fred Flintstone, yeah. he's and then he either comes out in the He back comes out with that suit. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the, which people, is a bitch to get yeah, out. Yeah, you know, Eddie Murphy <laughs> sits for, you know, five, six hours right. in a chair. He runs in between right. songs and puts it on. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, Oh, I'm trying to think of what uh, who else. He, I just remember the the two ones that stick out of my head is dressed up like Fred Flintstone and the fat suit. And I'm trying to remember what else. Uh, <laughs> Amish. He does the oh, Amish. Yeah, the Amish paradise. Yeah, Amish paradise. Amish paradise. You know, the big one. Yeah, Coolio was gonna Coolio was gonna hurt him <laughs> for. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> When he gets out hey, Julio of wasn't too happy. <laughs> Imagine if that, like, like, kind of, like, really happened, like, kind of like a Biggie Tupac thing, like, if Julio actually We're hurt Weird Al Yankovic. I doubt Al had any sleepless nights over it. Right. He, he does, from what I understand, he, he tries to get the permission from the writers of every song that he parodies, and... I think he thought that he was clear on the Coolio thing. I think Coolio objected to the video. Like he'd approved the song, but disapproved the video or something oh, like that. Okay. Now thought that he had permission for both, or and he doesn't even have to ask permission. He's just a class act that way. And then even like like just a miscommunication. Yeah, like you know, obviously the, the well, Coolio's movie. since uh, been cool with Weird Al. So like you know, all about the Pentiums and um, white and nerdy. Oh, white and nerdy. White and nerdy was brilliant. And uh, what's uh, he did the one uh, Couch Potato, which was like uh, Eminem's Lose Yourself. You know, isn't mm -hmm. it? He's done every Weird, style. Weird yeah. Al has skills. Yeah. You know, lyrical skill. Like mm -hmm. I mean, like like white and nerdy. It was just such a. I mean, you know, is very diverse. Yeah, white well, and nerdy, and this is the guy who got started with, uh, you know, doing uh, polkas. <laughs> right. And it's like, you know, to sit there and to, you know, to put that stuff together. I mean, yeah, obviously, when you're parodying somebody, there's a spine, you know, there's a spine you can work with. But I mean, you know, and and obviously for anything, well, he does with a nerds, lot of you know, original material too. Oh yeah, yeah. Which I think is, I think is actually some of his better stuff is his original material. And uh, uh, 
like I mentioned earlier, stuck in a closet with Vanna White. That's kind of like a hardware yeah. store. Uh, Kristen's hardware looking at me like interesting. Kristen's looking at me like I got ten hits. She has no idea what I'm talking about. I know that. Word. I like uh, one more minute. One or getting stupid. Oh, and spend one more minute. Wait, I could probably sting that right now without like needing. I could do karaoke on that right now without even looking at the lyrics. Well, I heard that you're, that you're leaving, leaving. <laughs> Here we go. You are gonna <laughs> leave me far behind. Um, let's see. Not oh. saying a word. I'm just gonna show it for that one. <laughs> uh, Melanie. Man. Oh yeah, Melanie was great. What can the now, there's a lot of talent out there in in these <laughs> demented artists. Now a lot of them are just Doctor Demento is the primary one recognizing them uh, because anything that's funny is just kind of knocked down as as not being a display of some sort of uh, greater talent. Mm-hmm. It's, and it's a shame. It's a, it's, you know, don't knock someone's musical talent. Because Weird Al, I mean, I know we were talking about Dr. Demento earlier, but, you know, Weird Al is his protege, like you mentioned earlier. Uh, you know, he, pr- Weird Al pretty much works with the same, like, four or five guys. I mean, of course, he, he probably brings in other people, but, like, the musicians yeah, he's are always, He's had the like, same primary backing band since, like, uh, 82, something like that. Yeah. And, you know, so I think they added one member in the '90s, but uh, yeah, he's had the same the same band, and those guys have to be just as versatile behind him as right. he is with the uh, lyrics and the singing. Yeah, I think people from, think, oh, because it's funny and hokey that yeah. don't take them serious, but from, they gotta learn. Yeah, from Amish Paradise, aspect, yeah. you go from Amish Paradise to Smells Like Nirvana. Right, <laughs> right. Two different genres, yeah, and music way styles. different parts of the spectrum, but it's you know, and people brush it off like, oh, they're just funny, but there's huge talent yeah, behind it. Exactly. So, now, if you make people laugh, people just assume it must be easy to do that right <laughs> they have made people laugh before or, you know, i'm sure there have been people who've said oh my five-year-old could have written fish heads but uh, you know there's a lot more going on oh, there than, than just did. uh fish heads <laughs> there's a genius behind <laughs> fish heads fish heads eat them up yum it's just... definitely a genius behind <laughs> fish heads <laughs> Eat them up, yum. Eat them up, yum. I was heavily... I I'm heavily sorry. Remember, I, we're going on YouTube as soon as we finish recording. Um, no. <laughs> yes, absolutely. you got you got to hear fish heads. I will. got to hear fish heads and dead puppies. Those I, are the two. I promise you, Devin, I will. That's my word to you, I will. But that's, <laughs> that's part of the show. I, I, expose her, I expose her to the nerd world. And then, you know, in, in return, she exposes me to, like... To reality crap shows. Reality TV <laughs> and the Kardashians and, and the Real Housewives. Although Chris and, has given more info on Kardashians. Lately. I kind of, I, <laughs> she opened that door and I rushed right in. For some reason, I became a Kardashian aficionado. So wrong. Our Kardashianado. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm still out of the Kardashian loop. I, don't, don't get I mean, it. It's it, not worth it. It will suck you in. It's one it. of those, it's kind of like a Pokemon card. Like yeah. as soon as like, you don't mean to get it. You kind of like pick it up and go, hmm, what is it? it? Then all of a sudden, like, you know, you're running to stores and collecting packs and getting gold and, you know, and all. it's, it's like one of those, it's, it is a weird kind of addiction to get into the shows because they're so innocuous that you just get sucked into it. And like, really? Yeah. What is Chloe doing this week? You know, oh, you know, oh, if you drink a bunch of cranberry, was it, what, did you see the most? I heard, no. <laughs> I, I, I haven't seen the episode, but I heard it's about drinking apple juice and it's what? supposed to make your, special area smell better that's gross it's so and, and I'm, well, I'm and, glad they're bringing these issues to the forefront yes, really. yeah yes. they're doing a, a, it's a public service yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I'm sorry about bringing this up on your episode it's, it's just you know and, and Chloe is the judge of we'll, the contest we'll edit this part between out, Courtney worry. and Kim no this is, this is what's happening now uh <laughs> We have to know if apple juice makes your special well, area smell. Because <laughs> you know, because if you eat a bunch of marshmallows, that means your crap's going to smell. It tastes like marshmallows, right? This is disgusting. This is <laughs> well, I'm just, I'm, I'm just, down I'm not just saying that. that one, yeah, right. No, but it's it's, it's that the logistic that mentality. Of it? You know, but it's this mentality. That's, you know, that's but, something I'm fine with remaining uh, <laughs> unknown. It will get you. Let me tell you. Unfortunately, I got sucked into the world. I, I get sucked into. I got sucked into the whole Kardashian world, and it's it's my thing. It happens to the best of us. Everybody. <laughs> has some sort of reality show that they're addicted to. Oh, yeah. You don't even want to know mine. Some guilty pleasure. I'm guilty of saying it. <laughs> guilty pleasure. Now, I guess we could go back a little bit to the documentary. <laughs> See how I said that right? Um, no shot. Besides Dr. Demento, is there anybody else that you would want to follow and do a, a story on? Well, you know, as, as we're going through the research process for this movie, we're finding so many other personalities. I mean, people that we've listened to on the Dr. Demento show for for years, but uh, never really knew their, their up close and personal, you know, biographical information. And uh, I would love to tackle a couple more demented artists, uh, living and dead. 
Uh, I would. I think uh, we should do a Screaming Jay Hawkins or a Tiny Tim documentary next. Right. Those guys are fascinating. Wow. Yeah, Tiny Tim. Now, for some reason, and this is just part of my childhood, are you familiar at all with Uncle Floyd? Uh, I know Uncle Floyd. Uh, he was more of an East Coast thing, but I, yeah. I know of Uncle Floyd. I even have uh, I heard a great story from him recently. Uh, Uncle Floyd was telling a story where uh, apparently David Bowie came into his studio audience. This was in uh, in the late 70s. Uh-huh. And, you know, he's kind of flipping out. He's backstage. And so he says, you know, David Bowie just came in. And he said, how, how the hell does David Bowie even know who I am? <laughs> and he went out and he, he did the show. And then Bowie asked to meet him afterwards. And when he, when he met Bowie, he said, well, how did you find out about me? And uh, Bowie said, oh, John Lennon told me about you. <laughs> That's <laughs> crazy. <laughs> oh, my God. Trip. It's like double whammy. <laughs> Oh my God! Mount Rushmore, know, like, like, like you know, these pile, epic. Pile, pile, pile. And then Jesus came down yeah. and told me about. It. <laughs> yeah, it blows your mind, like you know, when you when you realize that yeah, you know, John Lennon's got a left, you know, yeah. David I Bowie's got a left, <laughs> and who knows how many you know other artists out there that you know people quote unquote take seriously like David, probably listen to you like know. David Bowie easily listens to our podcast, so <laughs> we'll just give him a shout out. Oh yeah. <laughs> Hi, David. Donate to our movie. And, yeah, donate. And, and Sting <laughs> and and who else? And Bono and, yeah. and all those guys. They all listen to the podcast. And, yeah, you know. yeah. You know. Oh, <laughs> huge rock star following. <laughs> but uh, I will say, Demento does have a rock star following. So. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, in fact, uh, he, Doctor Demento, is thanked on the uh, liner notes for Aerosmith's "Toys in the Attic." Very cool. Nice. That's a huge achievement. So, yeah, I think. Uh, I, I guess story. I guess Stephen Tyler first heard uh, the song "Big Ten Inch" on the Doctor Demento show <laughs> and then covered it and gave Doc a shout out. Oh, okay. I, I gotta wow. I gotta download that. Album. I gotta go. I purchase that album. I mean, <laughs> purchase, purchase. I have to go legally acquire. Yes. That album. <laughs> So it Not sounds like one. this documentary documentary will have um, a big rock star following. Be I, I certainly hope so. Yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, it'll, it'll just make the after party better. Right? Oh, of course. Oh, <laughs> of course. oh. you and David Bowie. <laughs> yeah. But uh, Doc does have a lot of famous fans. He he worked for uh, uh, Warner Brothers Records for quite a while too, and and wrote uh, liner notes and and things like that. So he's he's got a lot of connections, and he he was also uh, broadcasting live from K Met in the '80s in L.A., which was the hangout for you know David Lee Roth would just wander in from the street and hang out at right. so <laughs> just pop in. So these these guys all know each other. It's always nice to see somebody who has all these connections and all that and somebody who on the other hand their personality is <laughs> totally humble and Oh you know, yeah. It's always nice to see not, that. Not, none of it went to his head. Yeah. Which is pretty that's, impressive. That's saying a lot about this guy. Right. So um we're gonna start to wrap this up. Um when it comes just just real quick, when you uh, do you is there like a storyline that you're following or or is the story going to be found in the editing? Or uh... Uh, Most of the writing is going to be done in the editing just because uh, we don't know what uh, some of the interviews are going to drop on us. Uh, you know, one, one casual sentence can shift the entire attention uh, <laughs> when you're dealing with the history of something uh, pop culture related. But uh, we do have an outline. It does have a beginning, middle, and end. And it's going to primarily focus on Barry Hansen, and it's going to get into the history of the Demento show and uh, the a brief history on, the, uh, on funny music, comedy music. Uh, but the heart of the movie we're projecting right now to kind of be the K-Met years, because he was there from 72 until 87, I think. And uh, we've talked to several of his crew members from that period, and and uh, including Whimsical Will, who I used to call him Pester all the time. <laughs> and uh, they really that. just kind of, they, they felt like family, and we want to focus on that. Those are really the, the prime years when Weird Al was discovered and and the show was really at its peak. So that's that's going to be the, the brunt of it, I think. Okay. That sounds awesome. Sounds awesome. I wish you all the best with it. Sounds like you're having fun so Thank far you. making and, it. And we want to encourage our audience to please go check out the Kickstarter. Go to Kickstarter, search for Under the Smogberry Trees or Dr. Demeno, uh, smogberrytrees.com, right? Am I getting that all correct? Smogberrytrees.com. Yes. Check uh, them out. Donate. Share with friends. Plenty of cool rewards. Yeah, now, it, it, 
Now, with the USBs, I just want to double check. Do they actually have top hats on them? Or is, was that just the graphic? Because I, <laughs> no, they will I be want a top, a top hat. It will be a top hat flash drive. Oh, it will, perfect. It, will, it may not look one. exactly how it looks. So that's the prototype. But it will basically look like that. Okay. okay. And then the, there's kazoos, you know, because I'll take it. because uh, uh, Dr. Domeno's had people, you know, Kazoo's do all types of performances. <laughs> now, if we could get David Bowie with the kazoo. Here we if go. I could get that picture, <laughs> that would be... <laughs> You know, if you can put that on the back of the DVD cover. Now, <laughs> now, David, if you're out there, I'm, yes. I'm always open to talking about giving you a kazoo. Give us a call, David. Give us a call. But I do have to say, I mean, uh, you know, yes, I'm a self-proclaimed nerd. I'm excited about this project. I, you know, like, I'm looking forward to what's what's coming up because you know, Doctor Domeno was a part of my childhood, just like you. It, it shaped part of like your comedy sensibilities, and 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 you know, made me the person I am today. You know, like I, I can. I found that he to... broadened my taste. Yes, I, I I agree with you. He um, the fact that you could listen to a on on the Doctor Demento show, you could listen to a Spike Jones song from uh, 1945, mm-hmm. and have that be followed up by White and Nerdy. Uh, you know, it, it makes it makes for eclectic personalities, and it allows you to kind of give everything a, a shot before you make your judgments. Yeah, keeps you absolutely keeps you grounded yeah. and open minded. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, we wish all the best with it. So thank and you. I wish you all the best for your uh, your upcoming as well. Thank you thank very you. much, thank and thank you. thank you for taking the time to let us blab to you about anything and everything. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we went over the plays <laughs> and movies and. <laughs> And Hollywood and radio and so uh, Devin, thank you very much for coming on the show. Thank you once again for supporting our Kickstarter when we had it. Um, we definitely encourage our audience go right now. If you're in front of your computer, go right now to Kickstarter.com. Check out their their uh, project under the Smogberry Trees or Doctor Demento, whichever one you search for. Thank you for coming on our show. We really appreciate it. And I had a blast. And hopefully, you know, when you become a rock star, don't forget the little people when you're. Yeah. <laughs> you, can inter- you can interview us. <laughs> no, no, no. Dr. Demento is going to be a good influence on me. I'll keep my head. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. We certainly hope you guys enjoyed listening to the show and had as much fun as we did recording it. Thank you for listening to Two Strangers, One Podcast. I'm Chris. And I'm Kristen. And? Devin. Devin, this is Devin. I'm Devin. There you go. <laughs> uh, don't be a stranger. See ya. Bye. All right, here we go, man. Go ahead. You want to read Double there? jackpot. What is it? It is a self-published book by Christopher Cologne. Chris Cologne smells good to me. But- <laughs> <laughs> Look at her. That broke that fucking cold little exterior. He's like, hee. But it is spelled C O L O N. Him punny. But <laughs> Double Jackpot is a book about a comic book artist, Eric, who is in a loveless relationship with oh, a materialist. I feel you, Eric. Lynette. I, 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 oh, fucking. Are you oh, sure God. I didn't write this? <laughs> uh, I, I smell, sounds hauntingly familiar. He starts cheating on his girlfriend with a more creatively, su- sorry, creatively supportive woman, Nadia. Oh, I, I gotta meet her. Where's the Nadia? There's your summer girlfriend. Summer Nadia is Nadia. Nadia? Yeah, I think Nadia spelled with an A. All right. Both Lynette and uh, Nadia play the double jackpot, the largest payout in lotto history, much like the recent Powerball. Both girls play his birth date as the winning re- as the winning numbers. Eric is now stuck between two of the country's richest women. Who will he choose? It's not that simple. This is a clever fucking idea, yeah, man. Is. Look at her, fucking. She's impressed. I am. Summer. She got some summer reading. <laughs> Christopher Cologne smells real lovely with an original idea. This is. I've never heard this before. I haven't either. This is a self-published book, much in the indie spirit as Kev's Clerks. Oh, you don't even need to name check me. This is just a good idea. You could stand on your own, man. You don't even have to be like, hey, remember Clerks? This is nothing like that. (laughs) This is way more original than Clerks. This is a good idea, man. Why didn't I think of this? I need something to read. This book is part of the Comic Books Heavy Metal Video Games Trilogy Book 2. Odd I See, A Tale from the Road, coming soon. Right on, man. It's part of a trilogy. This is the first part. Way to write, man. He's seeking a literary agent. Motherfuckers, anybody out there? There ain't no literary agents listening to this show. I assure you, sure. Sure. I assure you, sure. But somebody know a literary agent? Hook a motherfucker up! <laughs> Chris Cologne come up with an original idea. I should tell Raskin. That's a good fucking idea, to be so honest too. with you. That's a fucking rom-com right there. Megan, get Raskin on the phone. <laughs> Isn't it possible to get Raskin on the phone? No? Yeah. 
I don't want to run it past him, man. I want to, and if it happens, I get a taste, Chris Cologne. I get a, a whiff, if you will. The book could also be ordered on www.lulu.com. That's lulu.com. I understand that. I just want to spell it out. <laughs> <laughs> Normally one says it, that spells it. Still, lulu.com. What is that? Do you know what it is? I don't know. All right. The book could also be ordered on www.lulu.com. Search for Double Jackpot Christopher Cologne. A paperback version of the book is $15, and a PDF file is only 5 bucks. Five dollars yeah. is insanely inexpensive. Fifteen's not even that bad for a hard for a paperback version. No. This is a million dollar idea right here. Like a, a fucking a movie about a dude who fucking is stuck between two chicks, both of who play his birthday and win the lottery. Come on! Come I, like on. I can see that trailer. Chris Cologne is on to something. Nobody else can smell it but me. I'll read it. Thank you. I'm gonna make that smelly joke. I all. know, you're trying to get me to laugh again. It worked once. <laughs> Double Jackpot is a self-published book by Chris Cologne, man. It's the first book in his comic books, heavy metal, video games trilogy. Book two, Odd I See, A Tale from the Road, should be coming out soon. Get all the information. At Chris Cologne, like a motherfucker, I will and his totally book, read this. Double Jackpot. I'm serious. I'm going to recommend that to fucking Raskin. That's, how is that not a movie? You know what I'm saying? This could be a sexy movie. You could do an R-rated version. There could be nudie in it. And you could sell them fucking both chicks. Maybe a little penetration. Maybe a butthole shot. No butthole, no care. I would like to formally apologize to Christopher Cologne. Right no, now, sex but... sells. <laughs> Chris Cologne will appreciate that. He's like, thanks for throwing a few buttholes in there, man. Don't forget to check out Two Strangers One Podcast.net, your one stop resource for everything show related. You can find links to subscribe to us on iTunes or on Stitcher. You could also find links to buy my book, Double Jackpot, on Two Strangers One Podcast.net. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, you're cool, and fuck you, I'm out.